Let's thank him. Let's thank him for being in, in each other's midst. Let's thank him for we will learn how to interact with within each other today. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Some of us, they don't even know how to talk to other people, but this day is our beautiful day of learning each other. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, glorious God, for privileging us to be in your midst this morning. We glorify your holy name, O God. Let's thank God for the word that will be shared this morning. Let's ask God to open our hearts. Let's ask God to open our eyes. Let's ask God to open our mind, our spirit, to receive from Him this morning. Let's, op let's ask Him. Open your mouth and ask God everything that will be taught today by our pastor. Ask God to embrace you with the heart to receive. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love in our lives, oh God. You have loved us, oh Lord, though we didn't love you back. But because of your grace and your mercy upon us, oh God, here we are, oh Lord. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord. We worship you, our Father. Lord, we lay our crowns this morning to worship you, Abba Father. And Lord, we ask that you will accept our praises. Let them be of sweet smell unto you, O God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, glorious God. Thank you, we worship you, Abba Father. We give you the highest praises this morning. We honor you, glorious God. We say you are mighty and you are worthy, O oh God. Oh, yes, you Jesus. deserve all the glory, O oh God. Yes, Honor God. belongs unto your holy name, yes, Abba Jesus. Father. Thank you, Thank glorious you, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, be lifted. Yes, Jesus. Above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship.
It's a privilege to worship you. Make a
Jesus. Come and worship the Lord wherever you are today. Worship the Lord wherever you are today. He's great. His mercy endures forever. Worthy are you, Jesus. You are great, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you today, Lord Thank God. You, we have come, Lord Jesus, with open hearts, yeah. oh God. Thank you, give you thanks, oh Lord. You have been so faithful, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All around, all around, everywhere I look, your love is all around, all around, all around, everywhere I look, your love is all around, all around.
fighting my pain I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord I'm changing my sorrow I'm changing my pain I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord Oh, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Yes Lord, yes Lord Greetings to my mother and all the leadership of the church and the congregants in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are already seated. <laughs> After this vibe, oh, today is a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Yes, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And once again, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and happy friends and family day a day filled with fun hallelujah i'm standing here to take quickly the announcements make sure that you listen attentively uh, on this announcement hallelujah on the 26th of this month which is in days from today hallelujah we have our annual healing has begun service. Hallelujah. Bring the sick. 
bring those who are sick in the body, those who are sick in the mind, those businesses that are sick, those marriages, relationships that are sick. This day is the day of healing. Is healing has begun with one and only our prophet, Dr. Boni Ogwejiofo. And also that day we have a guest song minister, which is Pastor Queen Duko, will be ministering to uh, that day with songs. Hallelujah. You don't want to miss this. Make sure you invite your family, you invite your friends, your neighbors, including your enemies, that they are sick in the body. Hallelujah. Also on Tuesdays in the month of February and also in the month of March, we are gathering as the church, as the leaders, uh, as the workers of the church, as the lovers of Christ's world ministries on Zoom. Please, media, can you please post our Zoom connection link for the leadership training? Hallelujah. We have on Tuesdays, every Tuesday in the month of February and in the month of March at 8 p.m. South African time and 7 p.m. Nigerian time, leadership development and capacity building workshop. Those who have started the first class, the second class, they can testify the importance of that meeting, not just as a church leader, but for your life generally. If you have not yet joined, I would like to encourage you to join. This is for everybody that has internet and a wonderful phone. Uh, the, 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 joining, the link to join is on the screen. You can take that down. The meeting ID is on the screen. The passcode is on the screen. And uh, that will be a ministering. Uh, those that are ministering is our one and only prophet, Dr. Boni Ogwejiofo, our pastor, our mother, Pastor Joy, Reverend Sam uh, Ihianacho, Reverend Harrison Aintente, and Dr. Basil Ibe, uh, also Apostle uh, Dr. Kaya Meseko, and Apostle J Dr. Jerome Swartz. Make sure that you register. You take that number you take those links and make sure on Tuesday 8 p.m. you are glued on your screen to build yourself up hallelujah hallelujah this is the time to glorify the Lord about all the good things that he has done in our lives and in the families at large hallelujah but I do not like to start up a time where we need to give God glory in this atmosphere. Maybe if we can just say yes, Lord, one more time, just Jay, for one minute choir, then we can go and glorify and celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, 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 y
so much, Christ Generation. Thank you, thank you, our beautiful choir. We appreciate that. When it's time to give God glory, the atmospheres must be set where he can see we are celebrating and we are grateful for all that he has done and keep doing in our lives and our families. So family is a time of our testimonies. Without wasting any further time, I would like to call upon the altar, Mama John. Hallelujah. Mama John would like to share her wonderful testimony of what God has done in her life Hallelujah. and the life of her family. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm here to testify about my son, what was happening on Friday. As, as you see his face now, I thank God for his life. I see him today next to me. Ah, merci Seigneur pour ton amour et comparable Yahweh. Merci pour ta protection Jésus. Merci parce que tu veux sur nous jour et nuit Yahweh. Tu combats pour nous tout papa. Les combats visibles et invisibles Seigneur. Merci Seigneur pour ton amour à voir mon fils Yahweh. Merci papa. Merci Yoshua ma chère pour ton amour papa. Ma santé Jésus. It was on Friday. It was around two. Around two afternoon, it was first around twelve. When I was praying, after praying, I said, "Oh, now I'm done to pray. I'm start playing joke with my son." And then around two, the electricity come back. I said, "Let me make you sleep because I don't want you to sleep at church." I tried to make him sleep. He didn't want to sleep. I tried to make him sleep. He didn't want to sleep. I said, "Okay, say so. Let me cook you quick so I can go to church afternoon." I put him on the couch. On the coach, I always put my big mirror on the wall. I put, I just turn my back, I just see someone jump and fall down and cry. I say, what happened? I go straight to check my son already bleeding. After bleeding, I check him already, just the mirror, just cut the lip and leave this piece of cheek. Thank God, because he didn't touch the eyes and nose. I thank God, because it was a big mirror. The mirror was breaking or breaking into pieces. So I thank God because God is alive. And he took us to the Danunu clinic to, to stitch him. And we went there. They took us long to stitch him. My son was still bleeding too much. So we went there around two, uh, it was around four. We stayed there until around ten. Now they call us just to stitch him. It was bleeding so much. I said, God, wherever devil playing for my son to no work. Thank you, Jesus, because I see again my son is alive today. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Papa, for all of the pray for kids. Thank you so much for prayer. Hallelujah! 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 Father, we thank you. We thank you for the life of our son, you see how he has preserved his eyesight from everything that had happened. See how it missed, it's just a miss that the glass of the mirror did not enter his eye. But you see how it cut him up until his lips. He is stitched up from there. From if you, can, if you will look at him up close, you will see that the stitches from up there, that is showing the severity of the cuts on his face. Thank you, Father, for when the children were prayed for in the beginning of this year, we can see your hand of protection over our children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is indeed what Pastor said, that one person, I don't know how you could not remember it, uh, um, ma'am, that the song which he said, he is hearing somebody singing the song, what the enemy has planned, God had turned it around for my good. Hallelujah. There is the evidence. He had turned it around. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Now let's proceed to Sister Bongiwe from Delft. We call upon Sister Bongiwe from Delft to come up to the altar, please. Let us hear the wonderful work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As she's coming, just celebrate Jesus. 
Celebrate God. Celebrate the I am that I am. Celebrate the great and mighty warrior. Celebrate the one who's able to do the impossible. All things to him are possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, she has requested that I share her testimony on her behalf since uh, she will have difficulty in articulating what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. So with her permission, I will share her testimony. Sister Bongiwe uh, had a stroke in 2020. Hallelujah. Her entire left side of the body was paralyzed as a result. So she could not walk properly. She could not make use her left hand, her left arm, or do anything with it. Hallelujah. Up until Deaconess Nolundi invited her to come to the church in one of the services where healing was one of the theme. Hallelujah. She came to the church. Pastor prayed for her. She prayed, he prayed for her, and he gave her an instruction that she need to buy water. And he took water from the church itself and prayed over it and gave it to her. Now she said she kept on drinking that water and also buying water and drinking this water. Hallelujah. To God be the glory as she keeps on going to her physio. All of a sudden, as the God would have it, as the God fulfills his word. Look at her now. Sister Bongiwe, show them that you can now raise your arm. Show them that the arm that you could not walk is the arm that now you can you can twist. You see, say, Church, do you see? That is the arm that could not be lifted. That is the arm that could not be turned. As you saw for yourself, she walked by herself and climbed on the altar with no assistance from anybody. This is how the Lord has proven himself worthy, trustworthy, mighty in the life of our sister. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Sister Bongiwe. As you can see, there she goes. She said the doctors could not believe that the arm could walk or she could walk in the way that she is now walking. They even told her now that she can move her arm, she can try to wash certain things and even able now to even hang her clothes in the line. Is God not alive? Church, let me hear you say it. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Lord. Celebrate Jesus wherever you are. Celebrate the Prince of Peace and celebrate the Lord of Lords. Wave those hands and say with me, thank you, Jesus. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank, you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus, for making sure Amen. our sister's song was not hot. Thank you, Jesus, for making sure his bones are in order. And thank you, Jesus, for your healing in the life of Sister Bongi. To your name be all the glory. To your name be all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Miracles and testimonies I approve that Jesus is alive. Praise the Lord. And if he's alive, he will do what he did before much more today. Hallelujah. Keep testifying. When you testify, your miracle becomes made whole. When you testify, God does much more for you. Now look at your neighbor lovingly. If you are seated by a neighbor that is not looking at you lovingly, 
exchange your seats this family and friends money look at that neighbor and say welcome to family and friends day so you are seated by me is this you somebody catch up with a friend this morning catch up with a family member come on so this is you this is you you are still here hallelujah glory to the name of the lord praise the lord be, be watching their face to be sure they are genuine look at a neighbor another neighbor say i love you with all of my heart with all of my soul i want you blessed I want you to succeed. I want you to go from glory to glory. Oh, I love you. Let your prayer become your answer. My friend, I love you. My family, I love you. Stand on your feet. Give somebody a hug this morning. Give somebody a, a beautiful hug this morning. Hallelujah. Hug, hug somebody this morning. <laughs> Oh, Jesus is alive. <laughs> hey. I love you. You love me. We are all a part of God. Sing it with me. Stand with me. Agree with me. We all are part of God's body. It is His will that every need should be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to tell them I love you. I love you. You love me. We all. Body. Stand with, with me. me. Agree with me. Agree with me. We all. We all are part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are. your neighbor say I pray for you you pray for me I love you I need you to look at another neighbor say I won't harm you with words from my mouth cause I love you I need find another neighbor say I pray for you you pray for me I love you I need you to so I pray for you I would hand you with words from my mouth say I love you I need you to I won't have you again I would have words from my mouth I love you I need you to survive alright sing the next one I mean every word that you are singing this morning oh, yes, Jesus. I love this family Jesus. of God yes Jesus so close 
in Jesus most precious name we have prayed Amen. hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah. praise the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. Be seated for a while. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so you know that from this morning service, we will be heading to Clement Garden and dear. We are going to enjoy family and friendship. Sometimes when it is declared friends and family uh, service, some people like me that had not a very wonderful friendly background, they say, let them go, it's for women. It's women fellowship. Let me walk. If it is hard work fellowship, I will be there. But you know, Jesus, he told his disciples, let us. He didn't say let me. He said let us go over to the other side and have some time of rest and have some time of friendship and refreshment. Praise God. And that's why we decided that today's service is going to be casual. So you can be free with your family. Do you used to put suit inside your house? When you are eating dinner, you are all on tie and suit. Do you used to eat suit? Put You know, eat suit actually. <laughs> Praise God. So let's be free as family and relate as family. Praise the Lord. And uh, so if you didn't prepare casual, you can enter that shop, get yourself one Christ World t-shirt or uh, um, um, Jesus, Jesus, what is that again? Jesus party. And um, very soon we have all different kinds of brands the Christocentric Bilonia. I the one I'm waiting for is the one that says I like Jesus that one is my one I like Jesus and the one that says I am a spirit I used to have I am a spirit and when I pass in the mall you got that one on Get more of it. I'm not, I'm not sure where mine is now again. I'm a spirit. So when we pass, they look at us and they know that they turn us, I am a spirit. Sometimes I'm in front and I hear people saying, I am a spirit. I thought that person is from Christ's world. Only to realize that they were reading what is at the back of my clothes. Praise God. Let's, let's, let's enjoy the gift of friendship. Without love, this earth will not be habitable. And let me tell you, every human being on earth has love in him. With time, you will discover that. Praise God. So I want to just, uh, we will have some, some conversation so that when we get to the park, we will play. <laughs> when we say we will play, I need to watch how some people's eyes are looking. But this, here, let's have conversation. Let's discuss. So that we will have time to play. Amen. It is part of the journey of the kingdom. God created us to have time to work and time to play. 
Praise God. In fact, real fruitfulness results from playing. Let's go beyond that. Family and friends. So we want to talk about creating a friendly family. Creating a friendly family is what we want to talk about today. Creating a friendly family. Number one thing I like you to have at the back of your mind is that family is God's idea. I'm sh- uh, I think your sound may be a little bit purer. Uh, it's okay here, but can be more cripsy. Praise God. Family is God's idea. God was the one who instituted family. And he has a plan for mankind in instituting family. Imagine that if Adam's wife was also a man. Imagine that Adam's wife was also a man. Will you be here? The two of them, would, there wouldn't be story of mankind. Mankind would have finished long from Adam and his Steve. God was the one that instituted family. And he has an order that we must do everything to restore in our generation. The concept of family is something that people no longer understand what is it. The younger generation growing up now, they don't, they don't understand what family is. They take anything as family because there is confusion. But today, I don't want to go into the doctrines and the divisions. I want to focus on building a friendly family because if friendship is in your family, you will correct any error going on in your family without struggle. You will correct the error that preaching cannot correct. But a lot of families in our generation lack friendship. They are family, maybe united by blood, united by different kinds of things, career family, uh, corporate family, different kinds of family, but many lack friendship. Family is not worth doing without friendship. That's why we call this meeting family and friends. Praise God. You got to open your heart to not just be family, but be friends also. Some families have come to the point that they only endure their familyhood. Say, it's well, it's fine. We are family. So we just have to stay in this bondage because we are family. There is nothing enjoyable about the family life anymore. It's, it's an endurance because we are family. This morning, I am praying for you that as you live from here, the gift of family will be enjoyed in your family. You will not endure your family in the name of Jesus Christ. We hear stories of a man shooting his wife and his children. We hear story of a woman poisoning herself and the entire family to die at the same time. We hear families of brothers killing their fellow brothers, a wife killing the husband, the husband killing the wife, and all manner of things that happen. These happen because they have family, but there is no friendship in the family. We see families that one person is rich and others are lacking three square meals. We see families that 
The only time you hear the family members pray is when you say, Oh Lord, every household wicked enemy, guy, everybody will jump up to pray. <laughs> because they know they are household, but they are not friends, but enemies. And not an ordinary one, but wicked ones. So if you are praying, Lord, thank you for your love in this family. They say, mm. Thank you for how you are bringing us together. I say, mm -hmm. I was teaching in Teach Me How to Love You some few years back. And uh, the couples were saying, we are, they were entering in co into a covenant. You will remember my friend. Only you I will know. Only this one. And one lady who was there, when they finished, she called me, said, when you were leading us through that earth, a song we were singing in Roman Catholic Church came to my mind. One song that uh, uh, says, I believe in one God. So they are singing, No to Chuku, No to Chuku. He said, And there's one mad person that when they are singing that thing, he will just put his hand and say, No to So he said, When I was telling them to agree that you will be my only friend, my only wife, my only husband, he just said, I know it's with the lips, it's not in the heart. So let's just be singing what you told us to sing. Praise God. Some family has come to the point where nothing is like, is, is like friendship anymore. There's nothing like friendship anymore in their families. Today I pray for you that friendship be restored in your homes in the name of Jesus Christ. Family is God's idea. Is that Psalm chapter 68 verse 6. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. But the rebellious live in a son's cursed land. God sets the lonely in families. He is the one that sets the lonely in families. He doesn't want anybody to be lonely. He doesn't want anyone to be alone. After creating Adam, he says it is not good for this one to be alone. Help me tell your neighbor, loneliness is not good. Being alone is not good. Tell him, my neighbor, my friend, my brother or sister, being alone is not good. Hear it from God. It is not good for you to be alone. Some people are even staying close to each other. They are not even talking to each other. In fact, their hands are folded like this. So the thing I'm saying is not for them. They have made up their mind to be alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Loneliness is not God's idea. God says it is not good to be alone. If, don't, if you don't remember any other thing that I said this morning, understand that loneliness is not God's idea. It is not good to be alone. You need someone in your life. You need a friend. You need family. Hallelujah. God sets the lonely in family. So if he sees that you are lonely, he picks you up and puts you in family. He doesn't want you to be lonely. He takes the lonely and put the lonely in family. So if you are lonely and you're supposed to have a family and you are not finding a family, it's not God's problem, it's your problem. Watch it carefully. It's not God's problem, it's your problem. Praise God. 
If you are lonely and you know that you are lonely, God sets the lonely in families. Sometimes God, want, God looks at you and says, it's not good that, that this one will be alone. Let's put him or her in a family. You look around and you say, but I am enough. I don't need anyone. You are not saying that with your mouth. You may be saying it with your behavior, your attitude, your lifestyle. His Adam was not thinking that he needed a man. God looked at him and said, this one is not good to be alone. Let's give him a companion. So before you started thinking about your loneliness, God already knows that you are alone. And he has been making effort to, to put you into family way. So if you have not entered family, you need to check properly who is the problem. Amen. Praise the Lord. Say, Pastor, but I am praying. God is not answering my prayer. It's not always about prayer. It's not always about prayer. Praise God. It's not always about prayer. Sometimes your prayers are answered. You walk away from your answer. Let's flow. Friendship is the better way God designed life to be. Friendship is the better way God designed life to be. Woe unto he that is alone, the Bible says. Woe unto he that is alone. Ah, may God deliver you from loneliness in the name of Jesus. If you are alone from this place today, loneliness is over in your life. And you know that there are people that are married and they are still lonely. Do you know that there are people that are married but they are alone? Praise God. You didn't hear that. There are people that are married and they are alone. Even in the time of reprocreation, when they want to have children, it is fight. Just finish fighting, it's pregnant, life continues again. Praise God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Two are better than one. So friendship is God's better way. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Two are better than one. Verse 10 says, if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Ah, but woe unto anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. You need people in your life. You need friends. You need family. No matter how powerful you are, spiritually, financially, and otherwise, you need someone in your life. That's why we are singing. I need you to survive. You pray for me. I pray for you. I love you. I need you to survive. Can you look into somebody's face and tell the person, I love you. And I need you to survive. Hallelujah. Can you look into... I, th I think I can still see some shears. Bonnie, come forward. You're a woman of God. Stop always hiding at the back. Come, come. Bonnie Swa, come forward. Whether you are not sure if it is the Swa one that I'm talking about. Well, let me add Swa to it so that you will know that I'm talking about you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So give seed, give seed. Let's, if you find uh, open space before you, let the ushers know so that those who are standing can find a place to sit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's enjoy today. Friendship is a gift. Family is a gift. Friendship is God's better way. If either of them falls, one can help the other up. The war unto him that is alone. War unto him that is alone. Pity anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. Like, do you have a friend? Do you have a friend? Do you have someone that at your stage, at your level, if you happen to fall, you can tell the person, I am down. And the person will make up his or her mind to come and bring you up and not turn you into an object of gossip. Do you have such people? It's better to know whether you don't have them or you have them. It's not a curious. At your level, do you have someone you can call by 2 p.m. and say, I'm not sure what is going on in my marriage. And he will not pick phone and say, hey, even the holy ones are now fighting in their marriage. I thought their marriage is not, not nothing touches. So they are also having problem. I didn't say it. Too. Let me go and see them. Then get more. <laughs> then he comes. He's asking you. So what happened? Your thought is asking you with concern just to get more information. He may even be talking to you and be texting the people. Hmm, you can't believe what I'm hearing. Praise God. Do you have someone you can tell I am so broke that I have not even paid my house rent? And he will not say, Chai, it's well, oh, my brother. And then go somewhere to say, even the rich also cry. You can't believe who was telling me today that he has not paid his house rent. Oh, I thought I'm the only one struggling in Cape Town. Do you have friends? And excuse me, are you someone's true friend? Are you a friend? All right, let's find out quickly because time is running. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Are you still here? The question of having good friends starts with you being a good friend. There is no friend, there is no good friend for a man or a woman who himself is not a good friend. Every kind of person that comes around you, you will turn them into the kind of person that you are. If they don't want to be your kind of person, they will exit the relationship. But if they can condone your kind of person, they will, you will begin to grow into each other's kind. Except you set yourself out for transformation through the word of God. But if you are going to be a good, if you are going to have a good friend, you must learn how to be a good friend. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 said, a man that must have friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that still gets closer than a brother. A man that must have friends. If you want to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. Those things that when people are doing it, you say, hey, yeah, this, yeah, this person is very friendly. Do you do it? That 
person that always picks his phone to call you and you feel like this person is very friendly. How many persons do you pick your phone consciously on the ground of friendship to call them? How many persons do you consciously on your own on the ground of friendship type meaningful SMS? Today you, you are no longer doing SMS and you pay two rand or pay one rand. WhatsApp is there for everyone. But some people have never used WhatsApp to say, what's up, bro? It's WhatsApp. You've not been able to use WhatsApp to say, what's up, bro? How are you? Simple word, how are you? Anybody that must have good friends must learn to be friendly. If you are not friendly, you cannot find good friends. They will come around you and migrate in search of good friends. Hallelujah. So, as we talk about building a friendly family, let me quickly mention what is this thing called family once again. Family is a group of people related by blood, or by marriage, traditionally related by blood or by marriage. Maybe people inside one marriage are related from one father to one mother to another. But then, family, we have relatives, we have relations, we have blood relatives, family members, but we also have corporate family. We have organization and family. We have different sorts of family. Something that is a bond bringing you people together under a common ground, under a common interest. You are a unit. Praise God. Let me run beyond that. They, were, they used to tell us in those days that family is a group consisting of two parents, father and mother, and their children living together as a unit. If that is a family today, how many families have family? Praise God. A group of people united by marriage. And they are consisting of parents, father and mother, and their children living together as one. This was the original meaning of family. Today, you hear somebody, you hear a child was saying, hey, hey yeah, I wish to be like that, my friend. I said, what's it with your friend? He said, he goes to weekend in her mom's house today. Next weekend, he goes to weekend in her dad's house. And you want to be like them? He said, yes, God forbid you that evil. Praise God. You know what that means? That his friend is going to weekend in the mother today, this weekend in the father. What's the meaning of that? He's coming from a divorced family. And that's what your child is praying that he wants to be like his friend. God forbid that evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. And even if there is separation, it is not your desire. It is not your will. And the God of all grace is still able to make all things beautiful in his own time. Hallelujah. So, the original plan of God for marriage is that we are together. But so many things could happen to separate the family. It doesn't necessarily mean that your family is not a perfect family, but it can become better. Amen. It can become better. It is not the will of God. God says, I hate separation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to do this. So we have mentioned all manner of faces of families. And then, who is a friend? Who is a friend? A friend simply means a person you like. See, so friendship starts from you, not from him or her. It's the 
the person you like. So the person that initiates the friendship is your heart. A friend is a person you like. It's a person who you know well and who you like a lot. And this particular one is dictionary definition of friend. A friend is a person who you know well and who you like a lot. Are you still here? So two basic components of friendship. Number one, there is knowledge. A person whom you know. Number two, there is likeness. There is no friendship without knowledge and likeness. Are you here? Knowledge is very basic in any relationship. You cannot truly like or love someone you don't know. You cannot truly like or love someone you don't know. You may claim to love someone you don't know till you find out the stuff he or she is made of. Till they show you their real color. Maybe they are doing uchibuchi because money has not come. When real money comes, it will reveal the demon that has not been, he has not been delivered from. And then you will know whether you are willing to love him and this demon together or you're going to leave him alone. So knowledge is required in friendship because a friend is a person you know and you like a lot. I like the word that it puts it a lot. You didn't just say, I like him. No, you come to a point of saying, I like him a lot. I like her a lot. Can I ask you? Can I ask you a question? Do you have someone in your life that you like a lot? I'm not talking love now. Let's live love. Do you have someone in your life that you like a lot? You like a lot. The person you like a lot. Praise God. Help me ask your neighbor. Neighbor, do you like me? All right, hold on. Do you have someone that you know is your friend in this church? It's not, we are all friends in a family. But do you have someone that if you are having a challenge now, you can boldly call the person and say, as a friend, because you have confidence that the person will listen to you. Do you have a friend you know that this one is my friend? Uh -huh. Okay. Will you walk up to that your friend if I ask you to walk up to that friend? And ask that friend, do you like me a lot? Go to your friend if you have a friend. Go to your friend. Let me see people that really have friends in this our church. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Ask your friend, do you like me a lot? Some people are, are waiting for people to tell them that I am your friend. If you have a friend, you should boldly walk up to your friend and say, do you like me a lot? Do you 
like me a lot? A lot. A lot, a lot. Okay. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did that friend say to you? I, I am not seeing our brothers move around. Uh -uh. Jehovah help us in this church. Oh. Does it mean they don't have friends? the Lord now you have gone to your friend you have asked your friend what did they say to you what was their response but I know that if some of you are being sincere you will say let me think about it I am not very sure are you sure are you sure now I'm asking, are you sure they are no longer responding? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't have someone that you can confidently say that, I know that this person likes me a lot. Then, you need to work hard. You know, it is possible that people are married as husband and wife. They are staying together in their house. But the real person they like a lot is not in that house. Do you know it is possible that there are husbands and wives, they are married, did wedding, did tradition, did cowrie, did labola, everything. And they are staying together, but they cannot boldly say, I like you a lot. Can I ask the couples that are in the house? This is not couples day, but the most stronger relationship should be something should be existing among couples. Do you like your spouse a lot? Do you like your husband a lot? Do you like your wife a lot? Any wife that is here that knows that you like your husband a lot, stand to your feet with alacrity. See, some people are taking very long time to stand. Of course, I know you will like your you like your husband. Again, be fine. Hallelujah. If you like your husband a lot, wave your hand, say, I like my husband. What? Hold on, no. If you truly, truly like your husband a lot. No, I'm not asking love now. Love is confusing us in this generation. People say, I love you, but they don't know what it means. If you are sure you like your husband a lot, Throw your two hands up and say, I like my husband. Uh -uh. Leave this woman now. Where is your husband? Can I ask once again if you are joyfully liking your husband throw your two hands up and say I like my husband can I hear you say no one is forcing me to do this I am doing it from my heart 
I like my husband. Say my husband, my husband. in this house do we have husbands in this house who knows truly truly that they love them you know there are certain things that Jesus will want to say he said truly truly I say unto you you know in your heart that your love has not your likeness has not entered menopause you know there are stages that the thing is bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Then at a certain stage, it has entered monopause. It's no longer fruitful. If you know, your, a man will not go and marry a woman he didn't like. But there is the law of, what is that law again? Degeneration. The likeness will gradually begin to degenerate if you don't work on it. Do we have some brothers here who will still say, who can say, I still, I don't want to say I like, I know you like your wife. Sometimes women, after you have pressed and pressed, you will say, okay, marry. He's not sure, but okay, it's fine, marry. I'm not sure what again, just marry. But before a man we press to go and marry a wife, he liked that woman. So I'm sure you liked her before. But now is what I want to know. Do you still like her a lot? If you are here and you still like your wife a lot, stand to your feet and announce, I like my wife a lot. Stand better, stand very well. Be bold, be confident. I still like my wife a lot. I still like my wife a lot. If your wife is here, walk up to your wife, tell, call her whatever you call her, say no shaking. I still like you a lot. your wife no shaking I still like you a lot I still like you a lot no shaking no fear not I still like you a lot as I like you from the beginning I like you now and forever I will still like you I like joy I like joy Chai. Hey. Hallelujah. Are you standing by your wife? Brothers, go to your wife. Tell him, I still like you a lot. Tell her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. I like the way he went all the way to his wife to pronounce his likeness. Hallelujah. Some people will say, uh, the other day we were having friends and family day and this couple won the best kissing and strange dimension of romance. Somebody was saying, no, pastor, it's because the husband traveled. He just came back now. That is why they are like that. <laughs> if your likeness only comes back after traveling, you are in trouble. Because the time will come, you may not travel for three, three weeks, three years. You together, tanda for the same house. Amen. If you fat, you smell it together. If you watch your body, it's good for whatever is the situation. You still like her. You 
If I put microphone in your mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Friendship is beautiful. So do you have a friend you truly like a lot, whether you are married or not? It's important that if you are married, let your wife or your husband be your best friend. Others will come after that. If you miss that, there is a problem. Amen. So if you are telling someone, you are my best friend, it simply means besides my wife or besides my husband. You could have too many best besties, but beside my wife or beside my hus my husband, could be my best friend, whether man to man or female or whatever. The best. Some people say I only told that to my best friend, and your husband has not known it. Your wife has not known it. That's an error. And before you know how far that error has gone, a lot will be damaged. Praise the Lord. You see the way I'm joy I am enjoying this laptop. It was not like this when I was preaching with phone. A friend bought this for me. Can you celebrate that friend? Beautiful, wonderful, awesome friend. Hallelujah. Amen. So, <clears throat> let me pick up something about friendship and use it to tidy up. Hmm. A friend is a person with whom one has a bond of mutual affection. A friend is a companion, a confidant. A friend is a soulmate. A friend is a playmate. I want to stop here. A friend is a playmate. A playmate. And I want to zero down on this one. If a friend is a playmate and you say you have a friend whom you like a lot, do you have a playmate? Do you have a playmate? If you don't have a playmate, you need to quickly get one because it will help you to live longer. I'm telling you the truth. The research has proven, research has proven that life expectancy is higher among people who have playmates than people who don't have. So even if you are married and your husband is not your playmate, you need to begin to develop afresh. Your wife is not your playmate. You need to work more on your relationship to create time to play. Too much work without play makes Jack a doll. He can even be a doll, a doll woman or a doll man. A friend is a playmate. Life cannot always be serious. Life cannot always be under pressure. Life cannot always be under pains. Life cannot... It doesn't mean that if it is your playmate, you will be boxing yourself all the time. Just know the kind of play you want to play, but there must be somebody dear in your life that takes the pressure of life out of you and you laugh your heart out. Do you have someone that makes you to laugh? You have someone that makes you to laugh. That if you want to forget some sorrows of this life, you can call the person on phone because you want to laugh now. Praise God. And do you make people to laugh? When you come into people's life, is it just a time to akuchibiru, to be serious? And be fighting the problems of this life. Problems don't finish. Praise God. There must be a time to be free. And enjoy. The Bible says God gives us all things. Richly to enjoy. 
There must be a time to be free and enjoy life. We pass from here for a season. The people God gave to you, you have a moment with them. But a time we come, you're, the, the moment you have with them will become a memory. What you make of that moment is the memory they will leave behind when they depart from you. So you got to make up your mind to make your moment with your friends worthwhile. You, you make up your mind that when you are in people's life, the moment you create it with them will be a pleasant memory. Let me quickly get something because we need to run out of this place now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <sighs> Who is your playmate? No, let's be frank with this thing. I want that when you are going home, you know the person you like a lot. You know the person that likes you a lot. You know who your playmate is. That is friendship. That is family. Hallelujah. So do you have a playmate? Who is your playmate? Huh? Who is your playmate? Hmm? Okay. Hmm? Okay. All right. It's important that you find who your playmate is because you cannot live very long if you don't play. It's not a prophecy. It's not a curse. It is the order of life. If you don't have time when this is my time to relax and, and be glad and be happy and be joyful. Some people, their only playmate is alcohol. You realize that you play with those your friends when you are drunk. When you are not drunk, everybody and is young. Everybody will just be, be struggling. Then it is not that person that is your playmate. It is the alcohol that is the joint between the two of you. And believe me, when alcohol becomes your playmate, one day he will play with you. Praise God. It's not a good playmate. Alcohol is not. The foundation of true family is love and friendship. When love and friendship are not the foundation of a family, it becomes a battleground. They fight for land, they fight for cloth, they fight for friends, they fight for everything. They fight for the way you look at me, they fight for the way you talk to me, they fight for the way you are not talking, they fight for the way you are snoring, they fight for the way you are fatting. They fight for visually everything. When love and friendship is not the foundation. You hear me always tell the story of some couple some years ago. The woman was lamenting. Can you imagine? Even the fat we used to fat and we enjoy. Now when are you fat? We frown his face. The man say, Allah, Bob, we get back. You know, you call it arrow. Idiot. <laughs> it's a thunder fire you. Praise God. Now, friendship comes to a level where even if you fat, don't be frowning your face. I know you used to fat to your husband and your wife. That's why I'm talking about it now. Even if you fat, you are friendly enough that you are celebrate. Even if it smells, it's casual, but it's fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. People ended their marriage because the man wants to do brush. He will put his hand at the center of the, bro the, the toothpaste. And you are pressing it. Say, I can't spend my life with an idiot like you. What is the problem? Who doesn't know how to start from the bottom to press toothpaste? You just put your hand in the middle and you are making things not look disorganized. Toothpaste, how you press toothpaste is the reason you are going to court to end your marriage. It is a sign that there is no friendship in your home. The 
concept of family was initiated by God in an attempt to find a fitting friend for the man he created. In an attempt to find a fitting friend. So, you are not getting into family to find a wife first. You are not getting into family to find a husband. You are getting into family to find a friend. If your husband is no longer your inner carcass, bosom friend, you need to work on your relationship. If your sister has only become a sister, but no longer a friend, you need to work on your family. If your mother is only a mother, but she is no longer a friend, something has gone wrong in your family. God gave Adam Eve in an attempt to find him, find him a friend, a bosom fitting friend. Let's make him a companion, a friend that is fitting and suitable to him. That was the primary reason. So this war you are fighting about cloth, about land, about how you talk, about this, about that. Those things are secondary. The primary thing in family is friendship. You have too many, too many family members today that are not your friends. That family is beginning to die from the peoples of family. Family started in attempt to find a friend for Adam. Are you still here? Any family that is not rooted and grounded in love and friendship will soon become a breeding ground for witchcraft and household wickedness. The backbone of any lasting marriage or relationship is friendship. Family members that are not friends only endure their coexistence and not enjoy it. Your family members, brothers, sisters, relations, uncle, aunt, and you are not friends. You will only be enduring your coexistence. And you will be plotting against each other, setting traps for one another. A family that is supposed to be a joyful bonding family, a joyful, joyful bonding atmosphere of friendship. A family may start anyhow. Whether anyhow you started, whether your father found the woman and said, This is your wife, or your mother said, The Sangoma said, You must marry this one, or pregnancy resulted and you decided to settle. Whatever is the way your family started, it's okay that the family started. But if that family must last, you must labor to build friendship into the coexistence. It doesn't matter how your family started. Once it is family, it is now family. It, it, if it will last, you must labor, you must endeavor to build friendship. Friendship is built. You create solid structures and strategies to daily invest in your friendship, in your relationship, in the friendship of your family. If you don't work on it, very soon it will dry up. So, qualities of true Christocentric friendship is what I would like to do now. Just copy it. I wouldn't explain it. Just copy it. Number one, true Christocentric friendship will rather wound you in love than kiss you in deception. I want to start from that very hard side. True Christocentric friendship will rather wound you in love, hurt you in love, than kiss you in deception. You remember that Judas kissed Jesus. But did he love him? It was not a kiss of love. It was a kiss of wickedness. Not every teeth that is open at you is laughing at you. Some are preparing how to bite you. But a true friend will wound you by telling you some, 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 some unpleasant truths 
that you need to hear. By correcting you in a way that will change things well for you. But at the point of the correction, it may not be sweet. He is wounding you. But it's with a heart of love. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 27 verse 5. Open rebuke is better than hidden love. Look at it. Look at verse 6. Proverbs 26, 27 verse 6. It says wounds from a friend can be trusted. But an enemy multiplies kisses. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. When you are wounded and you know that the person that has wounded you is a friend. He says such wound can be trusted. So can a friend wound? Can a friend wound you? Life is unpredictable. In this journey, somewhere, somehow, a friend may wound you. A friend may hurt you. A friend may offend you. A friend may, may do something that will, that will destabilize you. But you can look beyond the wounds and you will still see friendship in that journey. It is better to endure the wound of a friend than the kisses of an enemy. Because it may be a kiss to point you to those that will destroy you. Hallelujah. Okay. So, if I wound you today, you know I love you. What if I wound you by preaching for the next one hour? Will you still know that that is a wound of love? I will not preach for the next one hour. Let's go home. We are going to <laughs> big touch, yalla. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some people that don't say amen in church for the first time, their amen rose up very well now. <laughs> All right, so a true friend strives to create an atmosphere of pleasantness. I have 13 qualities that I will share, but that will not happen today. Settle with this second one. A true friend strives to create an atmosphere of pleasantness. If you are the kind of friend that when you come in, the only thing you come in is to judge situations and make people see what is wrong and make people uncomfortable and it became your lifestyle, you are not being a true friend. If your presence among your friends does not create an atmosphere of pleasantness and sweetness, you are not being a true friend. No matter how you, no matter what is it you are trying to correct, no matter what is it you are trying to create and recreate, if your presence does not create an atmosphere of pleasure, or more often than not, an atmosphere of pleasantness and joy. Look at Proverbs chapter 27 verse 9. It says, perfume and incense brings joy to the heart. And the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Have you ever seen someone wearing a pleasant perfume? When he walks past you, something around you just turns around with joy. And then, have you ever seen someone came with very dangerous body odor? If they enter your bathroom, two hours later you enter the bathroom, the odor is still there in that bathroom. May you never be that kind of friend to your friends. You know, there are people, even in the church, that when they come in, okay, so I told you people, I told my wife that whatever you are, you, you, women, please hear me, whatever you are. Whatever you are using to be cleaning the floor, Stop it yesterday. Don't stop it today. Stop it yesterday. 
whatever is the gadgets and the uh, uh, detergents you are using presently, stop it. It's unfriendly. And I'm surprised that I am the only one seeing it. So I think it is more spiritual than physical. Because each time that thing is used, once I walk through that door, I stop. Whatever is it you are using for the cleaning, stop it yesterday. Don't stop it today. Do you understand that? Please change that. But I pray for you, stand to your feet, that you are that friend that when you appear, everybody feels pleasantness. In your family, they feel the joy of your presence. You don't need to look for that friend. Be that friend. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, make me a pleasant friend to my family, to my friends, to my relations. Make me a pleasant friend. Make me a joy spreader. Make me a giver of happiness. Make me a giver of fun and pleasure. Make me a bringer of joy. Make me a bringer of pleasantness. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost. And let the saints say a bigger Amen. Hallelujah. Take your tithe, take your offering, take whatever you want to give that you are giving to the Lord. Your weekly support offerings. Whatever you are giving to the Lord, your weekly support offerings, your tithes, your weekly support partnership for the rental and for the bills of the church. The rental support, whatever is it that you want to give. The pledges that we have made last week, because of the pledges that we made last week Sunday, we are not raising anything for rent. So if you redeem the pledges that were made last week Sunday, we add it up to take care of the rental for the month of February, not January, not March, or February. Praise God. So please come forward. Whatever you have that you want to redeem, come forward with it. The Lord bless you. Let's pray with you. Let's pray with you. And we will be off to the Clement Gardens. It's a beautiful place. And maybe we will talk more on some of the qualities and characteristics of a good friend. Amen. Come on. If you have something you want to redeem or give, come forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. You are a gracious God. You are a faithful God. No one is like you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You gave us friends. You gave us family members. You prepared us for a life of unity, not that of loneliness and oneness. Thank you, Jesus, for the good work you have started doing in our life. Anybody wants to... The, the, redeem the pledge that was made last week thank you Lord Jesus we bless you Father what you have done in our lives shall be permanent the doors you have opened no one closes it the doors you have opened no one closes it Anything that will bring bandage. Anything that will bring bandage. In the name of Jesus, we cancel it in the realm of the spirit. We declare that it will not come to pass. Anything that will bring bandage. Anything that will bring bandage. I pray around your life and family. Anything that will bring bandage. I cut it off in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone, every family, anything that will bring bandage, I cut it off. It will not come to pass in the name of Jesus. 
as you hold your tithe and your offering and your whatever you are giving your seed can you stand to your feet pray this prayer I will not go backwards this year my life will move forward my life will move forward from glory to glory my life will move forward from glory to glory lift up your voice and pray my life will move forward from glory to glory from glory to glory my life will move forward 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 from glory to glory from glory to glory from glory to glory Glory. from glory to glory I reject any plan of backwardness I reject any program of backwardness I reject it and cancel it I reject it and cancel it I reject it and cancel it I am moving forward from glory to glory from glory to glory in 2022-3 in Jesus precious name we have prayed thank you father for answering our prayers let your name forever be glorified for what you have given to us we return to give you in appreciation and thanksgiving accept our offering accept our tithes accept our seeds accept our new year bridge of confident of forward ever and backward never that will be the only experience we will have Sudi Bayaliata Cavando Salimania Inama Shakatuli Baradia da Casanto. Hold on a moment. Next Sunday is our healing has begun. I am seeing a woman that has some stones, not a stone. I'm seeing some things that look like lumps on someone's breast. Some things inside the breast that are not natural flesh. Please find whoever that woman is. God wants to operate supernatural surgery and save the life of that woman. They told her that this thing has spread and as I am seeing that, it has spread. It has come to the point where medical science we say, we can help you. But the father is showing me that situation now because he can help the person. So please, if you know that person that has an issue with some lumps in the breast, whatever kind of stone that it is, bring the person to church next week Sunday. And bring the sick kupalada ke sondia maraya. Zibo dia karadaba suti kalimia. I have understanding that on Sunday, I'm not going to go into that, but on Sunday, God is going to heal a lot of people with very dangerous and deadly health situations. And then God told me earlier was of this morning that he will heal people's emotions. There are people that are not sick in their body, but they are sick in their hearts. Bring those whose hearts need healing. God will heal. Thank you, Father. Receive our offering, receive our givings, and let your blessing be upon our life. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Surely, God's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. If you are going, if you have got, uh, if you have got something for bring and share, your food that you brought, oh dear Lord Jesus. Okay, so now that we have dismissed the people that are the firstborns of every family, whether you are an adult or you are a child. The firstborns of every family, please come forward and do lay, I need to lay hands on you and pray for you. Uh, you will be the first, you will not be the last. Every confusion that your parents didn't fight well to finish, which is still fighting you, whether you are a first daughter or you are a first son, 
whether you are first daughter or you are first son whatever you are first of please come quickly come quickly let's pray for you whatever your father did not conquer and your mother did not conquer that is now descending to attack you by the hand of jehovah you have conquered what your father did not conquer you have conquered what your mother did not conquer in the mighty name of jesus you have conquered i anoint you today that your victory will not be detained usually the first sons and first daughters are used for experiments they are being experimented in different ways then your parents learn how to be better parents subsequently it's not their fault but that is their first time of learning how to be a mother how to be a good father how to be a good mother so there are battles they don't understand in my place years ago we were growing up to know that first sons don't live in my place we grew up to know that if they say that this one is the first son you know that the real first one was dead already before this one I pray for you what happened to Esau will not happen to you what happened to Reuben will not happen to you what happened to Manasseh will not happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you will not lose your place and you will not struggle so much the God of Abraham is moving you forward the God of Abraham is moving you forward the covenant of first fruit is upon you you will fulfill that covenant I looked away from this to close church but it is coming back now again I see someone that is having milky substance coming out of your body I don't know whether it's coming from the nose or from the mouth or from your genital organ but milky substance coming out of your body or even from the anus I don't know please after the service let me see you or next week's Sunday healing. But if it is something that is very strong now, let me handle it before Sunday. Lord, I anoint these ones to declare that the battles transferred down from the ancient generations will not cross into their generation. And anyone that is already in those battles, as I anoint your head, that battle is over. You will rise up to be the resurrection in your family. You will not be the second class. Your position will not be taken away. Prosperity will not run away from you. Because the thing is that some of you are fighting what your fathers did not finish fighting. What made your father to stop where he stopped is the battle that the first sons and daughters usually face. The anointing is coming on you and the battle is over for you to fulfill your firstborn fruits and papers and receive your manifestation of your inheritance to the glory of the name of the Lord in Jesus most precious name we have prayed you are anointed to excel Reuben was told that he will no longer excel you will excel you will excel you will excel you will excel you are the first you will excel 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 you are the first you will excel the name of jesus you will excel you are the first and you will excel you are the first and you will excel in the name of jesus you are the first and you will excel you will excel you will excel you will excel you will not stop halfway you will excel in the name of jesus you will excel you will excel in the name of jesus you will excel you will excel you will excel in jesus name you will excel you will excel you will excel in the name of jesus you will excel you will excel you will excel you will excel 
thank you lord you will excel you will excel you will excel in jesus name you will excel you will excel you will excel the name of jesus you will excel in the name of jesus you will excel in the name of jesus you will excel you will excel the name of jesus you will excel you will excel you will excel in the name of jesus you will excel you will excel in the name of jesus you will excel you will excel the name of jesus you will excel thank you lord you will excel in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah we are going to arrange ourselves now to move from here you don't need to go back home we dismiss in time so that before the sun becomes very hot, we have gathered and start going home even me that is standing here i have research work and thesis to submit tomorrow so it's not uh, like uh, i want to go and be playing around uh -huh. the lord bless you the lord establish you don't go home put yourself together in that place where we are staying you will see god's blessing upon you hallelujah you will see god's blessing amen, amen. so open your heart uh, you are going to receive this letter use it to invite people to our healing service next week sunday use it to invite people whatever is that sickness you are hearing testimonies of what god is doing in this house so trust the same god that he will do it for your friends your family members your relatives hallelujah those that are watching with us for the first time can you just wave your hand if today is the first time you are watching with us if today is the first time you are watching with us just wave your hand we want to say a special welcome to you thank you thank you for joining us in worship we are glad to have you thank you thank you thank you hallelujah thank you for joining us in worship amen the lord bless you ushers please get to them and um, we will have more time with you as you return back next week sunday the lord bless you so if you have a car please carry as many people as you can as you can the address of the venue is in our christ world prayer portal chat on whatsapp the family uh, whatsapp group you will get the venue right there and uh, you will join us this morning this morning it's still morning it's not afternoon yet amen somebody in the building help me shout hallelujah somebody in the building help me shout hallelujah hallelujah somebody in the building help me shout